Contributing Factors to Work Addiction by Yolisus Chin. First of all, how do we define work addiction? Work addiction is an irrational or obsessive drive to work excessively. Unbalanced use of time and energy will negatively impact personal life and health. This includes working 50 or more hours per week and the sacrifice of leisure or rest. Workaholic or passionate employee. Both engagement and addiction may appear similar, which makes it difficult for employers to distinguish between the two. Workplace passion and addiction are different concepts. They have different motivations and outcomes. Workaholics often feel pressured, overloaded, and compelled to work long hours. According to the WPRC questionnaire, workaholics function in a negative mood state by creating self-imposed deadlines. No accomplishment is ever enough, prompting them to endlessly pursue more work. Passionate workers show higher levels of autonomy and experience greater fulfillment through work. This is characterized by increased vigor, dedication, and absorption. Engagement actually lowers the feelings of exhaustion and reduces burnout rates. Addiction has been split into seven components by the article Well-Being in the Workplace. The article's charts and statistics are available on the SAOT website. As such, I will briefly outline the main elements. Salience. Work dominates thoughts and behaviors. Mood modification. Work improves mood temporarily. Work addiction becomes progressively worse as their profession becomes their primary reinforcer. For instance, receiving praise, promotions, and salary increases. Tolerance. Requires ever-increasing amounts of work to feel relief. Withdrawal. Anxious, unpleasant feelings arising from absence of work. Relax. The return to former patterns of work. Conflict. Impairs social relationships and leisure activities. Problems. Increased health complications and stress. The main consequences are increased risk of depersonalization and higher burnout rates. An unhealthy lifestyle may actually reduce productivity by increasing the number of sick days taken. Who is affected? In a self-report survey, one-third of working Canadians identified themselves as workaholics that were unsatisfied with their current situation. The age range was 19 to 64. More specific to OTs, it appears that occupational therapists with 10 to 15 or more years of experience have a greater risk of work addiction. We will now cover the factors of work addiction and perpetuating aspects. Work culture. Work addiction also includes the broader socio-cultural context. The combination of higher costs of living and the competitive job market encourages workers to appear more industrious. Employers reward their efforts because they value productivity. Perpetuating aspects cannot be easily removed and will continue to impact work addiction. Healthcare is shifting to a corporate work model that prizes efficiency, sometimes at the cost of psychological health. Employers will continue to reward good behavior. In fact, they rarely attempt to fix work addiction issues because it is seen as a personal choice and a valuable commodity. Personality traits. Work addicts function with the belief that they have not done enough yet. This creates a negative mood because they are never satisfied and will continue to work. They may alleviate feelings of anxiety, but it also increases risk of depersonalization. Passionate workers decide to stop when sessions become unenjoyable. Work is intrinsically motivating, which produces positive affect. Perpetuating aspects. Personality and temperament are relatively stable over time which means that anxious individuals may rely on work to alleviate their insecurities despite knowing the ill effects. Many people are also unaware that they suffer from work addiction issues. The rapid rise of technology has increased our access to work material. We frequently use laptops and other mobile devices to continue to work even when we have left the workplace. Even simply checking work emails during holidays or weekends will reduce relaxation and leisure. Perpetuating aspects. Better technology has made it convenient to blend our working and non-working domains. We also have increased access to research materials, which prompts us to work and simultaneously keep up with our evolving field of practice. The workaholic profile often includes reduced delegation, increased stress, perfectionistic tendencies, and health complications. Older occupational therapists that have work addictions may be rewarded for their efforts with more demanding administration positions. Unfortunately, they may suffer from communication difficulties and have higher burnout rates. As leaders, their expectations from their coworkers may make the other employees feel inferior, judged, and resentful. Workaholics in leadership positions must ensure that adequate social supports and reasonable standards are set to empower their employees. Perpetuating aspects. Work addicts may have increased career advancement due to their efforts, 
but may bring about higher expectations on fellow coworkers that promote unhealthy working habits. Occupational therapy's role in healthcare will likely increase as the baby boomer population ages. This increase in workload demand will encourage employers to reward employees that put in extra time to meet their quotas. Furthermore, tight budgets may leave workers with less resources to accomplish their tasks. Lack of resources may cause reduction in efficiency and often requires creative problem solving. Employees may finish their tasks well after normal working hours. Perpetuating aspects. Future increases in workload with minimal resources are an unescapable reality, and most OTs are committed to connecting with clients, which will increase the risk of exhaustion, health problems like cardiovascular disease, and stress. The key references are marked with asterisks, and links are provided for easier access. Thank you for your time.